Hello, welcome back to another day in the arena. You're getting kind of the infinite old school view, and that's because this is an update video to tell you a few things. What we're going to go over in the video is an update to me versus Noxious, the matchup, schedule, uh, what's going on with me and what's going to be going on on the channel, MTG Arena and their new, excuse me, their new esports initiative, and the developer update involved there, as well as a daily MTG article that came out. So big news day, huge news day for Magic the Gathering uh, as a whole, not just for Arena, and also an update on what's going on with me. I'll probably type something up for the too long did not watch in the description if you're so interested. So first things first, um, let's get this out of the way. Everybody watching this, if you haven't done this already, needs to go into Magic Arena, go to the store, and go to redeem code, and type Game Awards. One word, Game Awards. Not case sensitive, can be lowercase, can be uppercase, Game Awards, and hit OK. It gives me a failure. That's because I already did it. It's one code per, uh, per person. But this is free cards and we do not turn down free cards in the arena. Hannah, we never turn down free cards in the arena. And what you should receive is one Cleansing Nova, one Galta, the Primal Hunger, one Risk Factor, one Search for His Kanta, one Vraska's Contempt, four Conclave Tribunal, four Eldest Reborn, four Lava Coil, four Merfolk Branch Walker, and four Sinister Sabotage. My friends, young CGB, the free-to-play account really needs those competitive cards, and you should get right on that if you haven't done it already. Okay, that little bit over with, I'm going to talk about me versus Nox Noxious. The match has happened. Many of you were interested in seeing it. I will not be uploading it. Um, and the reason is I lost very badly, and it wasn't in an interesting fashion. Um, the first game was probably going okay, and then right at the end of the game, and this is another reason I can't upload it because the recorded file is gone. Um, I guess it's on Twitch, so you could watch a VOD on Twitch, but I don't know how that's going to look. Anyway, at the end of the game, the it was, it was approaching the end of the game anyway. I feel like I couldn't have won the game, so I ended up conceding, but my entire computer completely froze. And not just Arena, I don't even think it was Arena's fault. Like Control-Alt-Delete did nothing. Everything seized, like nothing would move. I had to unplug it, wait, plug it back in, fire it back up, and I'm grateful that everything works, but I've never had that happen before. So I conceded that game because I thought I was strongly enough disadvantaged that there's no way I could win. The second game was some mana issues and just a terrible draw. And it's not, it's the kind of content that I would have definitely not shared on the channel. Even if I had won, I'd say, well, that wasn't really a game at all, was it? And uh, I've part of, I think what's been helping the channel is I'm not sharing bad games anymore. I'm, once I start, once I taught, my, taught myself some video editing skills to try to make the channel better, I cut those games out. And this was very disheartening. Um, back when I competed on the Pro Tour and when I competed in the invite only version of US Nationals, I never got to play in front of literally thousands of people, and I was really excited to play a competitive match of Magic in front of thousands of people and show what I could do. The fact that it went so poorly has me just extremely depressed about the whole experience, and I'm sure I'll get over it, and we'll move on to bigger and better things, but for now, I just, I don't even want to work on that or talk about it. Um, I will be uploading a video that I recorded with Nox's deck to talk about the deck that Professor Nox played. I thought that video went well, and uh, I don't mind sharing that and giving some, giving a little bit of a spotlight on what he's doing, so, and good luck to him and the rest of the tournament. I need him to do well because for my tiebreakers to matter, he needs to win as many games as possible, so I'm now in the awkward spot of rooting for my opponent. And um, yeah, I'm sure that Knox will either post the video or you can find the VODs on Twitch if you really, really want to see a very, very sad match of Magic. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, check that out when you get a chance. And I hope to give a better Knox a better run for his money if the cards will allow someday in the future. 
All right, uh, next thing up is the schedule. So maybe if you're new to the channel, you don't know, I have a full-time job. I am the owner and a full-time operator of one of our sponsors, hauntedflower.com. You've seen the ads now a few times, and I am the owner of the company. Um, this is a very seasonal business. It's the fourth quarter, Christmas is coming, and this is when we do almost all of our business for the year. So it's an extremely busy time. I want to get into full-time content creation and the support I've received on Patreon has like exceeded expectations, as well as the, the Twitch and YouTube numbers continue to get bigger and bigger for the number of viewers. It's all going faster than I expected. I may have to miss a few days of video production or streaming around Christmas time because I may just be too busy. And if that happens, please know I'm not trying to hide or run away from you or anything like that. I will be back and January, I can probably get into a schedule. I would love to upload a video every day and I would love to hit all the boxes like Limited and Young CGB series and all the other ones. I just may not have the time here in December. It's simply overload. Plus, if you uh, celebrate Christmas as well, you know the families also have a lot of get togethers. It seems every weekend I'm going to another family or extended family event for Christmas and it's taking the time I could put it into the videos. So I'm sorry if I miss a few, it will get better in January. So stick with me and thank you so much for all the support. It's been kind of amazing and I'm really excited to get into full-time content creation. The long-term plan is to train and people to do the jobs that I do so I can be a full-time content creator and my business can keep running because it's not just me. I have a team of employees. Um, my wife is involved in the business. We really do, uh, we really like each other and behave like a very, like a family that loves each other most of the time. It's a great team to work with and I want them to get to continue to have jobs. So I can't just drop everything from the business to be a content creator yet, but I, I hope to be in early 2019. And uh, with all your help, thank you so much. Okay, uh, the next thing that we need to talk about though is MTG Arena going esports. I'm going to cut the music on this. Nope, that's graphics. Audio. There we go. I'm going to cut the music on this really quick and pull up some articles. There we go. Um, so for, oh, two things to watch to get your information on this direct from the source. One is. Oh, Nate Price cracks me up. One is the developer video on the official uh, Magic the Gathering channel. I'll try to throw a link in description if you want to watch it. It's only 10 minutes. It is a little bit rambly. And in a, it does go over a bunch of changes coming to the game. Um, for example, there will now be an unranked ladder um, for best of one and best of three with matchmaking that supposedly will keep you from just running net deck into net deck if you are not playing a net deck. So that sounds fun. Finally, a place where you can brew happily. But the part that they want to push is rank 1.0, uh, what they consider to be a serious step towards ranked matchmaking. I'm going to give you the too long didn't watch version. In a nutshell, the thing that everybody is freaking out about right now is that there will be rank and it will only apply to best of one. There will be best of one limited and best of one constructed rank. You play the best of one ladder and you rank up. Uh, every month will be a season. At the end of every month, there will be some quote decay to your rank. So you will go down to some number and then you will have to build it back up and there will be rewards. We don't really know what any of those are yet. I imagine some cards, custom skin, maybe something like that, a promo foil, similar to the full art to fairy. Something like that sounds about right. But anyway, that is the idea. It's a month. There are monthly seasons. You chase the top rank. You get rewards based on where you are. And supposedly, once you are in the top rank, you see yourself ranked in the world. Ooh. All right. Here's the crazy part. Pro oh, uh, for those of you in Russia, Russia localization. Get excited. But this is what everybody's freaked out about. Um, 160 likes for this comment. 
I can't wrap my head around you choosing best of one to be ranked over best of three. Best of three is the competitive format. Best of one is the casual format. If you want to be ranked, you should be playing like you do in paper. 160 people on that. This is, and look at the thumbs down, 121 thumbs down on this video. And that's what it's about. I think I'll play devil's advocate for a minute. Chris Clay and I, uh, along with a bunch of other people were talking in a streamer's chat room last night. Um, we were in a few. Um, I can't remember which streamer specifically, so I'll shout out the three I watched that I know Chris visited. Muffin Pastry Pie, Wafu Gate, uh, Thundermo Hellkite. Um, anyway, Chris Clay asked the chat, how many games in Arena are played in best of three? What percentage? And, you know, some people said... 50%, so one, one person said 75%, a bunch of people said 10%, several people said 15 and 20%, something like that. The correct answer was 3%. 3% of games in Arena are played in best of three. I think it's pretty clear that rank 1.0 is going best of one because that's what most people do. Uh, that's just the way it is. If you want best of three, play more best of three. Right now, people log in and they play best of one. Now, there are a lot of problems with this. Um, the RNG, getting mana screwed in best of one. Right now, you can't rank up to save your life. You have to win 10 games in a row without losing. That is so hard to do um, in best of one. The best players in the world playing best of three win 60-ish percent of their matches. The best players in the world. Um, this, is, this is flipping coins. And if you expect anybody to win 10 games in a row, they're just getting... That's like winning the lottery. Not always. Obviously, there is some talent into it. I got to silver one because I played really hard and thoughtfully and never net decked. I mean, silver one is not gold, and it is not the levels above that. There are like three levels above gold. So I'm very curious to see how it goes, and I'm willing to give it a shot and see what they've come up with for this ranking up system. It has to be better than the current one. I, I've said over and over that rank doesn't matter right now in Arena, and it honestly doesn't. But with this update to supposedly get rank to matter, it has to be more generous than that. And I'm really curious to see what happens. But you just look at people going off here. Um, and it's kind of... <laughs> game is pure trash. Well, don't agree with you. Anyway, we won't delve too much into the comments, but what you need to know is that rank is going to be a best of one thing. And if you want all the info, watch the video for moments like this. So this is the other part. Many of you, this won't apply as much or hit you in the feels like it does me. I've been a fan of the Pro Tour since the very first Pro Tour, which I was fortunate enough to play in. I played in the very first Pro Tour. And uh, I've never stopped caring about it through all the years uh, since then. Um, and this is a really big announcement for people who are fans of the Pro, Pro Tour. And um, there's a lot of feels to it. So for me, I'm going to try to hit the points and try not to go off on rambles or rants. It's going to be difficult. Anyway... There's going to be, a, they're restructuring the entire Pro Tour. There's going to be a $10 million prize pool up for grabs in 2019 between digital and tabletop magic. And by digital, it's clear that they mean MTG Arena. They're trying, they say right here that they're integrating Magic's new digital platform, MTG Arena. Um, it's pretty amazing. So... Arena will be part of a structure that can lead up to a $10 million prize pool. So money, more than double of 2018. Holy cow. There's a Magic Pro League, which if you are in the top 32 each, not each year, you sign a contract, you play each other, and you have to stream. Uh, the combined worth of the contracts is $75,000. That isn't a lot of individual money per streamer, but it's a nice bonus. And I assume that they also get to keep... Um, the proceeds of their own streams. Uh, obviously, divide that by 32, it's not much money, but something. 
They'll be completing in seasonal, weekly matchups, etc. Basically, there will be a league that you can tune in and probably watch on the regular Magic channel to see top-ranked MTG Arena players playing each other. And that will be good content and very fun to watch. We'll get to know the names of those players because they'll be in the league for an entire year. And we can say, look at what this pro is doing. Look at what that pro is doing. Kind of like what I'm doing with the channel, but I think we'll have even more opportunities to see them play Magic Arena. And I think that's going to be really cool. Um, there's going to be a million dollar invitational event, so you have to be invited, in uh, Boston, March 28th through 31st at PAX East. That will be really fun to watch. So I'm already marking my calendar to watch that event. Um, they're promising high drama, yay. I'm gonna move right along with it. Um, the tabletop, okay, Pro Tours are no longer called Pro Tours. They're called Mythic Championships. Holy crap. They won't be called Pro Tours anymore. It's like Mana Burn. It's going to be one of those things where if you still call it a Pro Tour, you're a dinosaur, you're an old person. The feels. And uh, there you go. Each Mythic Championship, aka Pro Tour, will have 500,000 in prizes. MPL. So they're already starting to abbreviate. I have to get used to do this. This is the um, league. Where is it? Magic Pro League. MPL. Magic Pro League. I've got to get used to that abbreviation because they start using it and it feels like they didn't even warn me. They just start throwing it in there and I'm like, what the hell does that mean? I haven't gotten used to this yet. Um, all right. So challenger player, people can challenge uh, people who are in the pro league. And if they do well, and based on their rank, they might move into the MPL uh, when a new year comes. Fun. I'm sure we'll learn a lot more about that. All right. They talk about how beloved the pro tour is and how things are changing. They actually are canceling two pro tours. They had announced, and I'm not kidding. This was recent. I think it was like September. They announced there would be six pro tours this year. And now they're canceling two of them. Just a couple months later, they are canceling two of them. Um, Dallas, Fort Worth, and Sydney. Canceled. So now here are your no longer Pro Tours, which I just called Pro Tours. I have to stop calling Pro Tours. Mythic Championships, February, April, July, November. So I really look forward to watching those. It will be great. I'm just amazed that they already did some cancellations when they just announced that they were going to that. <laughs> So, moving right along, increased prize pool will extend down to last place. Everybody who competes at a Mythic Championship gets money. All right, that sounds nice, but look at this. After London, Pro Tours will not offer travel awards. That was a big part of it. Everybody who qualified for the Pro Tour got a travel award. Now, they take that away, and they're just paying out to everybody who shows up, but you have to pay for your own travel. So, depending what the, like, kind of bottom half looks like, you may not even make back your travel money. I kind of find that amazing. And then we have Barcelona, these blah, blah, have nearly rec... Oh yeah, they were going to have regionalized invitations, meaning more people from Europe go here, more people from America go here. They canceled that. Don't worry about that. It was announced again like two months ago. Not happening. Um, then they're talking about Magic Fests with Grand Prix tournaments and the Channel Fireball stuff. I don't know if that will change or will change much, but they're looking forward to announcing partner events, especially featuring Arena. More. So yeah, you can qualify probably for these Mythic Championships on Arena. That is what it looks like. And then as we go down, this is the, again, more of the feels and the controversy. We need to leave some programs behind. Nationals. They are canceling Nationals. They brought it back, I think, last year or the year before. It didn't even make it two years. I, there's, there, the, the idea here that a one-size-fits-all to Nationals is doesn't work makes sense to me. But I just have trouble buying that you can't have a national title tournament. Why not? I loved states tournaments back in the day, fighting to be champion of my state. I loved regionals. The best performance I ever had was winning a regional tournament, a regional championship. I've never been happier than the day I was able to call myself a regional champion. I thought that was one of the biggest deals in the world back then um, and really made my, uh, more than made my day. It made my year and it kept me attached to the game. And getting to compete in nationals when it was invite only and you had to win a regionals to go, was amazing 
And um, that, it makes me sad to see this go. World Magic Cup is canceled. Like, this is a tournament that was, it was so fun to watch because of the team format. The team format was amazing. And people cared so much when they were battling for their country compared to playing for themselves. It's the it's the time I really felt true camaraderie watching Magic as opposed to watching just a group of individuals out for themselves. But it's getting canceled. And so is the team series, which was only introduced, I think, a year or two ago. It's not a very new concept. And it will be done at the end of next year. They won't even have a team series. Gone. Uh, the Pro Club. The Pro Club is what keeps people on the train and gives them benefits like silver and platinum, which you've probably earned a plat you've probably heard of platinum pros and uh, things like that. Uh, I said on this channel with a few of my videos how many pro points somebody had gone, um, deleted. For those outside the MPL, the Magic Players League, the top 32 in the world, everybody else gets no benefits, absolutely nothing, and. Um, I mean, it's pretty pretty crazy. And then, where do they say the Hall of Fame? I missed it. But, oh, here it is. For the Pro Tour, for the Pro Tour Hall of Fame, this will be the last year of qualification and voting as we know it. When we get to voting season, we'll have a new Hall of Fame structure to unveil. So, that's going to be, ama that's going to be something... Um, it, was, it used to be with 10 years, within 10 years of uh, being on the Pro Tour, you could qualify for the Hall of Fame. And then you get, you get free invites to all Pro Tours for the rest of time. And that was a huge goal. And right now we have several amazing players who are becoming eligible to get voted in. And some did not get voted in this year. Um, I'm thinking of players like Brad Nelson, Jerry Thompson, Sam Black, who... Uh, Mike Sigrest, who I think should be Hall of Famers, and now the whole structure is changing next year. And man, I would hate to be uh, a player like right on the edge of getting into the Hall of Fame. Reed Duke is coming up. I'm sure he'll get in, but I would hate to be right there and then have the cheese moved, so to speak, have the bar change, have the restru have the structure change right as you get to the edge. It is so hard to play competitive Magic for ten years. I don't know from experience. I know from watching those who do. I'm a huge fan of the pro scene, and I feel so much for the pros right now because basically you read something like this and you have no idea what your future really holds. The top 32 are what matters, and that's all there is to it. Time to get cutthroat. Time to get intense. And uh, wow, it's a lot to take in. But it's also exciting. I've always wondered since I fell off the pro train because I had an invite to Los Angeles and I had to go and compete in it, but I couldn't afford it. I was a 14-year-old kid and I couldn't afford a trip to Los Angeles a few months after the last pro tour I played. And man, I now imagine if I could have played from home, if I could have qualified from home, like would my life be different? Would my whole relationship with the pro scene be different? As I am uh, with my current focus on Magic, being more of an entertainer than a competitor, I am a very average player. But something like this, and a client like Arena that's so fun to play, and a tournament structure with a real build to it, and a rank that matters, yeah, it makes me want to try harder. It makes me want to do more. And I think a lot of you will want to come on that journey with me. I look forward to continuing to try to uh, be a channel that helps you bridge between getting to know magic and getting to love competitive magic. That's my goal for the channel and for all of you. So I'm excited to take this journey with you. I want to thank you very much if you watched the whole video. Thanks for staying to the end. Feel free to post in chat that you stayed till the end. It warms my heart. So uh, that's going to be it for me. I got to turn my music back on. How awkward. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.